The internal rate of return is a very useful decision rule in deciding whether or not to accept a project at a firm. But in some cases, we don't even have an IRR. It's non-existent. There is no IRR for the cash flows of a given project. And in those cases, we have to use the net present value. So I'm going to walk you through an example where we have a non-existent IRR for a project. But first, I just want to quickly rev uh, review the decision rule for IRR. And, and that is we're only going to accept a project if the internal rate of return is greater than the cost of capital. And by that, I mean the opportunity cost of capital. So if IRR is higher than the cost of capital, we accept. But this decision rule is only guaranteed to work if all of the negative cash flows of that project come before the positive cash flows. So if the negative cash flows happen first, if you have negative 10 million, then 3 million, then 4 million, then you know, 7 million, or if the negative cash flows come up front and then they're followed by the positive cash flows, then you can use IRR. If that isn't the case, if the negative cash flow comes later or some, there's some kind of issue, then you might not be able to use IRR. It might break down. So in our example, let's say that you start a construction company and you raise uh, or you, you get this first project where you, you get $5 million up front as sort of a down payment, and then you get the rest of the money for the project, $17 million, at the end of year five. So it's going to be a five-year project. Now, for the first four years of the project, you're going to be incurring expenses as you build this building or whatever it is you're constructing. So it's going to be four million dollars a year in expenses. So, so let, let me walk walk you through a little little timeline here. Make sure you understand how the cash flows are working out. So this is going to be a five-year project. So here's year zero. Here's year five. Then we'll have one, two, year three, and year four. So in year zero. This is just the beginning of the project. You're going to get $5 million. I'll just put 5M to abbreviate that. And then in the middle, or, or I should say in between this initial cash flow that you get in year zero and the end at year five where you get $17 million, you're going to have negative cash flows for four years of $4 million. So negative $4 million, negative $4 million, negative $4 million. So you get $5 million up front. And then four years in a row, you get for the next four years, you get negative four million as you're building the building and incurring expenses. And at the end of year five, you don't incur any expenses. You just get that final payment of seventeen million dollars. So the cost of capital is ten percent. Now we are saying, okay, we want to solve for the internal rate of return for these cash flows. So I go and I plug it into Excel. I use the equals IRR function and so however you want to calculate it and turns out there's an error message in Excel because there is no internal rate of return for this project for this particular set of cash flows there is no IRR right so there's there's nothing where it would make it where the MPV would be zero there's no rate of return so basically we have to solve for MPV Right? So we don't even have an IRR to even compare against our cost of capital. So really, IRR is meaningless here. So, so here, basically, uh, I'll just tell you the number here. So we're going to calculate. Here's how we go ahead and calculate out our net present value. Right, We're just going to discount all these cash flows and so forth. So we're going to end up with a uh, net present value of positive two $2,876,201. So that means we are going to accept the project. Accept. Now, please don't read too much into this, right? So we used MPV because there is no IRR, but just because we're accepting this project and we had a positive MPV does not mean that if you have no IRR that you're automatically going to accept the project, that it, that it means that there's a positive MPV. It just as easily could have been that there was a negative MPV, right? So we could come up with a different set of cash flows that would end up with a negative MPV and still no IRR. So if there's no IRR, if you don't have any internal rate of return and it just doesn't exist, just forget about the internal rate of return altogether and go ahead and calculate the MPV. And, if, and then here we've got a positive MPV, so you accept the project. That's your decision.